As many of you know, I am co-hosting my first photography tour this September, and it's all about astrophotography. We are headed to Yellowknife in Northern Canada to experience the Aurora Borealis. Several of the attendees of the tour have asked what gear I'm bringing. I don't have my final picks yet, but I thought I would share with you all what I've tried so far and what I think I might be bringing. <laughs> Although the trip is still a few months away, so I reserve the right to make changes to this list. And I will also share a few photos and some gear that I have used and some gear that I've not used yet for astrophotography. <laughs> also members, I shared Member Monday earlier today where I discuss a few of the adventures that I'll be taking in the next few months leading up to Yellowknife. Um, I will put a link to that down below along with how to become a member if you are interested in helping to keep me up and running here in Snapchick land. There is a lot to think about when doing astrophotography and your gear really is an important part of the puzzle. Plus, I will be having to travel with the gear, so I have to keep that in mind. Oh, and there's two of us. Raymond and I both need equipment. And I'll also be creating a photography book and at least one video while we're on this trip. So we are probably planning to pack more gear than one might typically pack. Now let's start with the main event, <laughs> cameras and lenses. In my short time getting serious about astrophotography, it's definitely been less than a year, I have used both Sony and Nikon gear. Not that I think that it's the best to use for astrophotography. I have no doubt that you can do great astrophotography with any brand, but this is what I have used so far because, well, it's what was available to me. Let's start with the Nikon gear that I have used most of which I own. I used the Nikon Z7 in the 24 to 70 millimeter f4s lens and my results with that were a lot better than I expected them to be with an f4 lens and also considering that it was my first time out doing astrophotography but I don't think that that lens is ideal so that was one of the reasons that I purchased the 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 s lens and I'm actually finishing up my review of it in the next few days so you will hear why else I wanted it in that video but astrophotography was on my mind when I hit that order button and then I also currently have the 14 to 30 millimeter f4 s lens which I just reviewed so I played with that a bit on the z6 and that lens is borrowed so we'll see if it ends up in my bag for this trip there are definitely advantages to ultra wide, but it's also so much more frame to fill. So I got creative with what I could include in my image. I'm also gonna be thinking about whether or not we want an ultra wide for this trip, but we'll definitely bring both the Z6 and the Z7 and the two 24 to 70 lenses, the F4 and the F2.8. Late last year, I used the Sony Alpha 7 R3 and the 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master lens for some astrophotography. That lens, man. One of the really nice things about Sony is the feature called bright monitoring, which is where the camera will approximate the end result in the electronic viewfinder or the rear LCD, even when you're using a long exposure. And that was really helpful because you don't have to wait the 20 or more seconds for the photo to be taken to understand what will be in your end result. Now that kit was borrowed, so I don't own it, but I would definitely be happy to use it if I hadn't had to send it back. Now the one setup that I own and plan to bring but have not experimented with yet for astrophotography is the Nikon D810, which we had converted to full spectrum. And we have multiple lens filters to isolate certain bands of the spectrum of light. I will definitely make a video about it when I take it out for the first time probably next month, but I do have a video where I talk more about what that is, and I'll put a link to that down below. Now for tripods. I was using two relatively inexpensive tripods. You don't necessarily want the super lightweight, expensive tripods when you're doing long exposures, but we will have to travel with them. So I'm looking for a good solution for this. I have a number of tripods, but only two that I feel like are sturdy enough, and 
even those aren't a great solution. One of the tripods I use is, you know, it's good and sturdy and, and it's easy to adjust, but it's quite heavy and it doesn't collapse down to a convenient size, so not ideal for traveling. And the other tripod is the right size and weight for travel, but you have to turn multiple dials to adjust the ball head. So that's not really an ideal solution for this situation either. And this isn't gear, but this is something that I've recently found helpful, and that is the Photographer's Ephemeris apps. I purchased the pack of all three of them. Amongst the three of them, they tell you all sorts of information about sunset, sunrise, moonset, moonrise, and you can look at different locations. I have barely started using these apps, but I am finding them super helpful to have all of the information in just a few apps. Like the other day I saw that I had a very narrow window between moonset and sunrise. So I got my behind out there during that time. What am I carrying it all in? I imagine that I'm using my Atlas Athlete bag. It's my favorite. It's easy to travel with, it holds a lot of stuff. Raymond will probably bring his as well. And we will probably put our tripods and our checked luggage kind of like wrapped up in the middle of the clothes. It's worked well for the inexpensive but sturdy tripods that we've traveled with so far. But depending on the tripods we end up with, we may end up wanting to carry them with us onto the plane. We'll see. Just one more thing. Astrophotography is one of those areas of photography where knowing your gear is really beneficial having the muscle memory to know where your buttons and dials are on your camera, knowing how to use your tripod. For me, when I'm out there, I'm often cold, I'm typically alone, so it quite honestly can be a little creepy out there in the dark even when I feel like I'm in a safe place. <laughs> My point is that knowing your gear and how to use it quickly, no matter if you're shivering out of cold or out of fear, it will help you be more creative and get those cool night sky shots. So whatever gear I end up taking, you can be sure that I will be well practiced with it in many different situations. Okay, that's it for today anyway. I will let you all know as I build that final kit of things that we'll be using on this trip, but I'd love to hear from you all. I know that there are a bunch of you out there that have a passion for astrophotography or night sky photography, whatever you wanna call it. And I think what I wanna know is, what is that one thing that makes the difference for you when you head out? Is it a lens or a tripod, something that you look for in the location maybe? Is it how you edit? Let us know in the comments down below. And members, don't forget, this week's Member Monday, or if you aren't a member, check out the description for a link on learning more about supporting this channel as a member. And thank you everyone for watching.